Hi everyone, this is James. I have another video for you. I know it's been a long time since I've uploaded a video, but I feel the Lord has wanted me to wait till now. I have some very important information I think you're going to find very exciting. So let me begin. I'm going to read 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 1. This is the third time I am coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. Now, I have a few videos that I would like to share with you. And the first one is from a wonderful sister in Christ. Her name is Genevieve Brazel. The Lord has really worked powerfully in her life, and I've watched a few of her videos, and I really believe that the Lord is working through her. So what I'm going to do is play the video, and then I'm going to come back. Praise the Lord, and good afternoon, my beautiful family in Christ. It's your sister Genevieve here, and I'm coming on here today Monday the 31st of July to share something amazing that just happened so uh, I just watched brother Patrick from hourly watch I just watched his video where he's speaking about Miriam um, Miriam apparently he's speaking about um, how Miriam you know helped deliver Moses and um, Miriam is in the consolation and so he's speaking, I will put the link to his video in my description box. But I watched the video and straight after watching the video, the Lord tells me, go and look up the gematria for Miriam. And so lo and behold, as you know, uh, what Patrick has found, our brother who is steering the rapture cruise ship, glory to God, just as the Lord revealed to me in 2019, hallelujah, that Brother Patrick, hallelujah, is steering the rapture cruise ship. And this is no surprise why he is finding all that he is finding. And, um, and so, as you know, our precious brother has found an amazing sign in the heavens regarding uh, the 15th of September, the child being born. And again, even as Patrick said, um, no one's setting a date. We have to share with you what the Lord is showing us. Um, but um, no one's saying, this is the thus saith the Lord. It's going to happen on that day because only the Lord knows. But I have to share with you what just happened. I just finished watching his recent video regarding Miriam. And the Lord says to me, look up the, look up the gematria for Miriam. Lo and behold, my family in Christ, the gematria, the Hebrew gematria for Miriam is 159. 159, 15th of September, what are the chances? And the 15th of September is when the child is, is born or child is delivered. And that's the same thing that Miriam is also showing there, delivering the child. I mean, what? <laughs> Glory to God. And another thing I want to share with you is the 72650 that I shared with you guys in my recent video. Um, you know, God is amazing because 72650, that still stands. What are the chances? A few days ago, on the same day that Brother Patrick found the the sign in the heavens regarding when the child will be born, Brother Patrick had sent me an email, but I had just woken up. And the, for some reason, the Lord had me focusing on 72650. Remember my address? 7 and then the postcode 2650. And the Lord had me focusing on that. And it was almost like the Lord was saying, um, I don't want to say the Lord was saying, um, I felt an imprint on my heart to count 50 days from 726, from July 26 to count 50 days. Lo and behold, brothers and sisters, there's your 72650. 
Where does it land? It lands on the 14th of September from 7 to 6, July 26, count um, 50 days, and it lands on September the 14th. Glory to God. But in that moment, I'm thinking that, wow, that's amazing, Lord, because you've given me 72650. Um, so could it have been, could it be that the Lord was showing me 72650, count 50 days from 726, count 50 days from July 26? Because God's not going to reveal everything all to you, you know, everything all at once. He's going to give you nuggets here and there, you know, and um, we have to seek out, we have to seek things out as he gives us. We have to study and, and, you know, um, and search the word and, and ask the Lord for revelation. He's going to give it to us. So not only that, in that moment, I'm thinking as well that, wow, well, Lord, the 72650, the 50 could stand for that 50 days from July 26 to September the 14th. But it also stands for the Jubilee because many believe we're in a Jubilee. So 72650. So I'm thinking of all of this. And realizing in this moment that, wow, Lord, so it could be the Feast of Trumpets. That could be the timing that you come for us. Lo and behold, in that moment, I pick up my phone, I check my email, and the first email I see there is Brother Patrick sending me a link to the video that he just did about the discovery that he had made about the child being born on the 15th of September and I was blown away and so I emailed him and, and I told him what just happened and um, God is so amazing and if you have a look in that video that I did um, the 726 video if you have a look in that video that I did obviously I did that way before July 26 but if you have a look in that video I even shared in that video that the 72650 could be you know it it could mean five zero pentecost or it could or the five zero could also mean the jubilee and so glory to god then pa uh, brother patrick messages me back and says basically you know the same thing you know um and that how he believes that the the seven two six five zero could also mean um the 50 could stand for the jubilee and then I messaged him back. I was like, oh my goodness, brother, this is amazing. Because yes, um, if you watch my video that I did, I actually mentioned it in that as well. Like um, that, you know, the, the five zero could be, you know, for that. But how amazing is the Lord that that five zero basically points us to the Feast of Trumpets. Okay. And the five zero also points to the fact that it's a Jubilee. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is coming for us. And again, I will reiterate time and time and time again. We are not pointing to any specific date because only God knows the exact timing. But we have to share with you what we've been given. What we've been given, we have to share. So I love how the Lord works. That he gives me the dream in 2019 of the Rapture cruise ship stating 726. Okay. And what just came to me? That was in 2019. 20, 21, 22, 23. Four years later, this is four years later, glory to God, we are in 2023 and all this revelation comes out and oh, I'm just speechless. I'm just blown away how much God is pouring out his spirit and God was right in 2019 when the Lord said he named the cruise ship Rapture Awareness because he was pointing to uh, Christina and Patrick. And now they would be major end time players in steering the boat, hallelujah, um, in steering the rapture cruise boat and basically just being shown a lot of things that point us to the time frame. And glory to God, we, th we, thank, we, we thank the Lord for what he's doing and what he's showing us. So I think this is amazing. I needed to share this with you guys. I love you guys so much and I want to encourage you all to draw nearer to Jesus, fall in love with your King. Um, every day is a high watch time frame. I have to share with you what the Lord is showing me. In this moment, I just had to, like, I literally felt led. 
as soon as this happened, I sent Brother Patrick a message and I said, oh my goodness, brother, I sent him an email. I said, I just watched your video about Miriam and the Lord told me to look up the Hebrew gematria for Miriam and it's 159, brother. Do you believe it? And then straight away, I just felt led to do this video and to share with you. So what the Lord shared with me about 72650, hallelujah, that stands because like I never for one moment even thought that the Lord was pointing to July 26th and because in any none of my videos did I say God was pointing to that day. I just shared at that time frame when the Lord wanted me to share and could it have been, could it have been because the Lord was giving it to me basically indirectly saying the five zero at the end of the seven two six five zero stands for the Jubilee because well, this is the Jubilee year and it also is from July 26th to 14th of September, exactly 50 days. And Miriam, the Hebrew gematria is 159. God is speaking, family, God is speaking. He is pouring out his spirit. I love you all so much and I encourage you, hallelujah, to just draw nearer to him than ever before and sound the trumpet because he's coming. Love you all, family. God bless you now. Bye-bye. Now, if you watch Genevieve's video, I think you've found it very encouraging. But the reason why I played it is also to show you the connections with another wonderful brother in Christ. His name is Patrick from Hourly Watch. Now, he released this video I'm going to show you, I think, over a week ago, maybe around two weeks ago. And I really feel that the Lord has timed all this you know perfectly and once I got this information it was like a double triple confirmation so I want to play this video for you and then I'm going to come back and I have some information that I would also like to present and you're going to see why this verse is very important again 2 Corinthians 13 chapter 13 verses 1 the Lord has used multiple witnesses to show that he is God, he is all powerful, and he is proving that his word is true and his prophecies are coming to pass. And I really believe that the rapture is very close and the tribulation or Jacob's trouble is starting soon. Let me show you this video and then I will come back and I will share more information. Keep your heads up and your arms covered, beautiful family in Jesus Christ. There's no time to waste, so here's the verse of the day. And it's 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 2. There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none beside thee, neither is there any rock like our God. Yeshua HaMashiach, the rock, Jesus Christ. The red words, Luke 21, 25, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. And this is where we left off last, family. The heavens declare the glory of God. And it's obvious the Revelation 12 sign, the Revelation 12 sign is written in the stars. Verse 1, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And her crown is not in a different constellation. It's not in what they call Leo, the lion. Right around her head, there's Virginie stars all around her head, and there is twelve of them right in the vicinity of her crown of her head. And remember, John, he was caught up, to heaven and ate the little book and came back and wrote this revelation and upon her head a crown of 12 stars could literally represent the 12 tribes of Judah family Daniel 12 3 and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever Revelation 12, verse 2, And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And as you can see on the Revelation 12 sign, the asteroid, which in Stellarium they call it a planet, on the internet it's called an asteroid, the asteroid child is being born. 
Verse 3, And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And same thing. We know the Antichrist sets up ten kings to rule the world after the rapture and has seven crowns upon his heads. Ten and seven equals seventeen. In Agenda 2030, there's seventeen agendas. Verse 4, And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And the United Nations represents the dragon, and the United Nations asteroid is two days ahead of the child, standing before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Verse 5, And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the reason why I'm going over that? is because originally it looked like the child was being born on the Feast of Trumpets, September 15th, because that's when the child crosses the line. But that's before the Revelation 12 sign happens. And biblically, the birth happens after the Revelation 12 sign. So all glory to our Father in the name above every name, Jesus Christ, let me shed some light on this. These lines are imaginary lines. And biblically, the birth and the child being caught up doesn't happen until after the woman is clothed with the sun and the moon is under her feet. So biblically, there's no way the rapture could happen until after the Revelation 12 sign. So if this is the Revelation 12 sign, the last one, biblically, the rapture cannot happen until after the woman is clothed with the sun and the moon is under her feet. And as you can see, on September 19th, the woman is clothed with the sun. And our sister, Lydia, who was famous for her purple dye and clothing, is clothing the woman with the sun. And the moon is under her feet with the asteroid Yeshua, which is like Yeshua, the sun, and Yahuwah, the father, combined, along with the asteroid Miriam. And I did some research and Jesus' mom, Mary, her name was Miriam. Her original name was Miriam. And remember, Moses' sister, Miriam, she's known for helping deliver baby Moses on the Nile. So they're all down there by the moon, the father, the son, Mary, and Miriam, waiting for the child to be born. And most of you know about the star Spica. It represents the wheat. And of course, the wandering star Mars, they call planet Mars, the red planet, is right there too. Next to the asteroid 666, the number of the beast. And the asteroid Didymos is right there too, I'm about to show you. And a whole lot more, all glory to our Father. And that asteroid Didymos last year in September, it was smashed into by NASA by a satellite to change it from being Earth-directed. So NASA changed this asteroid's course, the course that God had it on. And I believe now it's on a collision course, and it will hit something. Now brace yourself, it's about to get gigantinormous. And you've seen the title, Whoa, False Prophet Francis in the Revelation 12 sign too, with the United Nations. And I showed you, it was Eleanor Helen who discovered 4580 Child in 1989. The same year as the big quake, the World Series earthquake. So I was doing some research on Eleanor Helen. And remember, this peace and security, peace and safety, seven-year covenant with many is on the same day as the Revelation 12 sign. September 18th and 19th. And I've seen a bunch of comments saying that Pope Francis is going to be at the summit. So I did some research. And Pope Francis, the false prophet, he actually endorsed Agenda 2030. On September 25th in 2015, Pope Francis endorsed Agenda 2030. Now back to Eleanor Helen. 
the astronomer who discovered the asteroid child. She also discovered the asteroid Francis, 2050 Francis. And as you can see right there, she named it after her parents, Fred and Kay Francis. And there it is, right there, 2050 Francis, right next to the woman, right where they've been jabbing people. And when you go to Strong's Bible Concordance for 2050 in Greek, the definition is a making desolate, a desolation, devastation that results from being cut off. So now in the Revelation 12 sign on September 18th and 19th, the same day as the covenant with many for peace and security agenda 2030 at United Nations, on September 18th, 19th, at the same time when the woman is clothed with the sun and the moon is under her feet with Yeshua and Miriam, we have the dragon, the United Nations. We have the beast, 666. And now we have the false prophet, Pope Francis, asteroid 2050. That means desolation and devastation. But it don't stop there. It's stacked and it just keeps stacking up, family. Check it out. Right down by her feet, by the moon, by Yeshua, by Miriam, is a comet, 130P, McNaught Hughes. And when you look up the meaning of McNaught, it means pure. And Hughes means soul, mind, or intellect. But here's what's gigantinormous. And I put it in red. 130p, because when you go to Strong's Bible Concordance for 130, the definition is shedding of blood. Exactly what Jesus Christ did for us. And then we got two comments named Botini, like boat. And at the top, you could see that one was discovered in 2010. They call U3. Like the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then there's another boat right between 130p and Spica. And it's called 340p Botini. And when you go to Strong's for 340, the definition in Greek is to renew. I make fresh again, renew, restore. And right at the top between U3 Botini and Francis is a comment, 180p, neat. And when you go to 180 in Bible Strong's Concordance, the definition is a stream, river, like the river of life. And we're about to set sail. And right under that is a comment 173P Mueller. And when you go to Bible Strong's Concordance for 173 in Hebrew, the definition is tent of the high place. And we got two comets named Shepherd. One is under the United Nations called B4 Shepherd. And the other one is up with the sun, 452P Shepherd, Jewett. And when you go to Strong's Bible Concordance for 452, the definition is Elijah. And we know Malachi chapter 4 verse 5 says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And we know that Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 17 verse 12 said, But I say unto you that Elijah is come already, and they knew him not. But have done unto him whatsoever they listed, likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Verse 13, then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. John the Baptist, his cousin, that prepared the way for the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua. And now there's a comment right next to the son named 452P, Shepherd Jewett. And 452 in Bible Strong's Concordance, the transliteration is Elijah. And the definition is Yah is God a well-known prophet of Israel. And right under that is a comment called 321. And when you go to Bible Strong's Concordance for 321, the definition is to lead up, bring up. I lead up, bring up, offer, produce, put to sea, set sail. And when you look at the exhaustive concordance, the word comes from Anna, and Anna means up. And I saved the best for last, family. Comet 362P, right underneath 321, right above the beast, 362P, 
this comment, when you look up Strong's Concordance for 362, the definition is to await. I await one whose coming is expected, family. And when you scroll down, 362 comes from 303. Anna up. And there's only one Bible occurrence. And it's 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10. Exactly what we're doing. And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. And I'll give you one more before I go. And it's Kelvala, 1454 Kelvala. And it's right by the other arm where they jab people. 1454 Kelvala. And when you go to Bible Strong's Concordance for Greek 1454, the definition is a rousing, a rising from death, a waking up, the resurrection family. After watching Brother Patrick's video, I hope you're really excited. Now, I want to show you a few things. Now, I've talked about my matrix that I received over two years ago. It was May 25th, 2021. Now, I'm not going to really talk a lot about that. I'm just going to show you a few snippets. But this image here I took from Brother Patrick's video. And I just want to show you a few things, possible connections. Now, if you take a look, you've got 7 and then you have 1-1 one, one, or 7-11. And you also have 9. So you can have 7-11 or 9-11 or 79. Now, take a look at this on Brother Patrick's picture in the heavens okay this is going to be happening very soon okay september uh i think it's starting september the, the 16th or 15th now this is a snapshot of september the 19th and brother patrick believes this is the actual revelation 12 sign and i believe that he is correct from what we're seeing here now if you take a look look at this date stamp you got september 19th 1107 so you got 911 here you got 711 and again this is what the lord had me write down all in this matrix and i don't think this is a coincidence and you're also you've got 911 here this is a second part of my matrix okay and if you watched genevieve's video it talked about miriam and also Brother Patrick talked about Miriam, and in a moment, I'm going to play another video. It is a short video, and you're going to see the connections again. This time, you know, it is very apparent that the Lord, you know, he has orchestrated all this. He is working behind the scenes. So let me show you this video. This video I've actually held on to for, a, I believe, around two years, and the brother... Uh, his name is Chris. I don't want to give his last name or his channel because he actually removed it from his channel. And I think he did that uh, maybe for protection or whatever reason. I don't know. But I feel the Lord wanted me to keep this video till the right time. And this is the time. So let me play this short video for you. And then I'll come back business ventures as a European with Russia. And it's also a well-known fact now that he's also in bed with George Soros. And it's no secret that Jared Kushner was also at the Warsaw Conference talking about this peace deal that they're trying to hammer out between Palestine, Israel, and the United States of America. Jared Kushner is a key person in this Middle Eastern peace process. And if that's the case, his name should show up right where we should see it about talking about this peace deal, this covenant. Ladies and gentlemen, as a matter of fact, that is exactly what we are seeing in Daniel chapter 11, verse 22. We are seeing Kushner's name sitting right next to the prince of the covenant. Kaf, Wav, Shin, Nun, Resh. But over top of Kushner running backwards, you have Mem, Pe, Tau Het, that's key, the Kushner key, and the Prince of the Covenant, and look who's crossing over top, the Pope. This word here, this is a word that Brother Scott found just recently, Memkaf Tau, that means he shall smite, 
Bet, bet, llama, that's Babylon. He shall smite Babylon. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I said I wasn't going to be very long. Now, after watching Brother Chris's video, you can see that Pope Francis is a very strong candidate for the false prophet, and Brother Patrick also believes that Pope Francis is the false prophet. And in the moment, I'm going to share with you some more information about Pope Francis and also Jared Kushner. So before I do that, I want to show you a few more things. But again, you can see the Lord is using multiple witnesses. Okay. Now let me show you something else. Now this is a Bible code matrix. This is actually done by Jonathan Wright. And I did not mention earlier, but Brother Patrick's name is Wright also. And they even spell their names the same, okay? What's the, you know, what's the odds of that? I don't think that's a coincidence. You know, the Lord, you know, he is just incredible. You know, he is all-powerful, and he can do whatever he wants. God is able, okay? But let me show you this matrix. Now, this is, again, I would say... Uh, three maybe four years old probably around three years old I'm guessing and again the Lord wanted me to hold on to this and you can see why look at this the beast okay and and again in a moment I'm gonna reveal to you some information about the beast Jared Kushner and Pope Francis but in this Bible code and this is actually found in Revelation it has the Pope is of the beast 666 the beast, he has a wicked heart, the whore, okay, a bad and two witnesses, okay, a Jesuit. Now, Pope Francis is a Jesuit, okay, and in Brother Patrick's, okay, video, we got Francis, you know, and that, and that would be Pope Francis, okay, and then you have 666. So it, and then you got United Nations. So you have the United Nations, Mars, be, um, is represented a lot of times as the god of war. Um, United Nations be the dragon. Okay, so, you know, the beast. So it's absolutely incredible. Now, I feel the Lord wants me to share a Micah chapter 6 and chapter 7. So once I play that, then I'll come back and I'm going to share some very important information with you. Chapter 6. Hear ye now what the Lord saith. Arise, contend thou before the mountains, and let the hills hear thy voice. Hear ye, O mountains, the Lord's controversy, and ye strong foundations of the earth. For the Lord hath a controversy with his people, and he will plead with Israel. O my people, what have I done unto thee? And wherein have I wearied thee? Testify against me. For I brought thee up out of the land of Egypt, and redeemed thee out of the house of servants. And I sent before thee Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O my people, remember now what Balak king of Moab consulted, and what Balaam the son of Beor answered him from Shittim unto Gilgal, that ye may know the righteousness of the Lord. Wherewith shall I come before the Lord, and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has shewed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. The Lord's voice crieth unto the city, and the man of wisdom shall see thy name. Hear ye the rod, and who hath appointed it? And there yet the treasures of wickedness in the house of the wicked, and the scant measure that is abominable. Shall I count them pure with the wicked balances, and with a bag of deceitful weights? For the rich men thereof are full of violence, and the inhabitants thereof have spoken lies, and their tongue is deceitful in their mouth. 
Therefore also will I make thee sick in smiting thee, in making thee desolate because of thy sins. Thou shalt eat, but not be satisfied, and thy casting down shall be in the midst of thee. And thou shalt take hold, but shalt not deliver, and that which thou deliverest will I give up to the sword. Thou shalt sow, but thou shalt not reap. Thou shalt tread the olives, but thou shalt not anoint thee with oil, and sweet wine, but shalt not drink wine. For the statutes of Omri are kept, and all the works of the house of Ahab, and ye walk in their counsels, that I should make thee a desolation, and the inhabitants thereof, and hissing. Therefore ye shall bear the reproach of my people. Chapter 7 Woe is me, for I am as when they have gathered the summer fruits, as the great gleanings of the vintage. There is no cluster to eat, my soul desired the first ripe fruit. The good man is perished out of the earth, and there is none upright among men. They all lie and wait for blood, they hunt every man his brother with a net. That they may do evil with both hands earnestly, the prince asketh, and the judge asketh for a reward. And the great man, he uttereth his mischievous desire, so they wrap it up. The best of them is as a briar, the most upright is sharper than a thorn hedge. The day of thy watchman and thy visitation cometh, now shall be their perplexity. Trust ye not in a friend, put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. For the son dishonoreth the father, the daughter riseth up against her mother, the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. Therefore I will look unto the Lord, I will wait for the God of my salvation, my God will hear me. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall I shall arise, when I sit in darkness the Lord shall be a light unto me. I will hear the indignation of the Lord, because I have sinned against him, until he plead my cause, and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light, and I shall behold his righteousness. Then she that is mine enemy shall see it, and shame shall cover her which said unto me, Where is the Lord thy God? Mine eyes shall behold her, now shall she be trodden down as the mire of the streets. In the day that thy walls are to be built, in that day shall the decree be far removed. In that day also he shall come even to thee from Assyria, and from the fortified cities, and from the fortress even to the river, and from the sea to sea, and from mountain to mountain. Notwithstanding, the land shall be desolate because of them that dwell therein, for the fruit of their doings. Feed thy people with thy rod, the flock of thine heritage, which dwell solitarily in the wood, in the midst of Carmel. Let them feed in Bashan and Gilead, as in the days of old. According to the days of thy coming out of the land of Egypt will I shew unto him marvelous things. The nations shall see and be confounded at all their might. They shall lay their hand upon their mouth, their ears shall be deaf. They shall lick the dust like a serpent, they shall move out of their holes like worms of the earth. They shall be afraid of the Lord our God, and shall fear because of thee. Who is a God like unto thee, that pardoneth iniquity, and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger for ever, because he delighteth in mercy. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities, and thou wilt cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Thou wilt perform the truth to Jacob, and the mercy to Abraham, which thou hast sworn unto our fathers from the days of old. Now, before I continue, I want to preface my next slide. Now, around three years ago, there was a peace deal that happened between U.S. and Israel and some Middle East countries, and Donald Trump was involved, and also Jared Kushner. And back at this time, I was doing a lot of research. I had some information, and I also feel that the Lord put on my heart to let me know that Jared Kushner is a candidate for the Antichrist, and also Pope Francis, and I... I you know, there's lots of information, and I've already revealed to you Bible code talking about the Pope being the false prophet. And also, when you watch Chris's video, it showed that Jared Kushner is the Prince of the Covenant. So in a moment, I'm going to show to you the information that the Lord verified to me months after I did this research. And said that this is correct and he gave me more information and I believe strongly that he wants me to deliver this information to you now so let me show you this slide and this very important information okay let me begin Barack Obama the former president is an 
Antichrist. Really take a look on how I'm wording this, okay? He is an Antichrist. His number is 44. He is the man of perdition. He is bad, evil. Jared Kushner, he is the Antichrist. His number is 666. That is a bad number. He is the man of sin. He is very bad, wicked. He will declare that he is God in the holy place. He will also put an end to the sacrifices halfway through of the seven-year period at the 3.5-year point. His logo that represents him, the beast, and the beast system is actually the Bluetooth logo. It is very bad. This is symbolizing the beast. Now, the technology can be very dangerous also. So, when the rapture happens and the tribulation starts or Jacob's trouble, I would highly recommend that you stay off your Bluetooth devices and do not take a mark with this symbol, okay, or anything that shows allegiance to Jared Kushner or Pope Francis, okay, and there will be 10 kings, so that will be leaders, presidents, okay, prime ministers that will have a time with the beast that will rule and they'll have one mind. Same with the governments. People you look up to, doctors, medical industry, big companies, very prominent, popular people, stars. A lot of them will be part of the beast system and they'll all have one mind. Do not be tricked by them. If they are in this camp with Barack Obama, Jared Kushner, or Pope Francis, do not follow them. Do not follow them. Pope Francis is the false prophet. He is the idle shepherd. He is evil. He has a wicked heart, just like the Bible code says. The Lord Jesus Christ verified this information. This is correct. Do not follow or worship the beast or the beast system or the false prophet, the Pope. Do not follow. Do not listen. Do not take the mark of the beast. The Antichrist will cause all to take a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Do not receive the mark. Do not take a nano tattoo. They will have very creative and inventive ways that will try to convince you that it is okay, okay, to do this. If you do it, you'll be condemned forever in the lake of fire. First hell, it's a temporary place of torment, and then it'll be thrown in the lake of fire for eternity. There's no escape. So you're going to want to listen Trust what the Bible says. You're going to see that this is going to come to pass. And you're going to know that the word of God is true. So, again, please. The Lord has done so much that he would protect you. He doesn't want anyone to perish. He loves everyone. So whoever can be redeemed doesn't matter what you've done in your life. God will forgive you. Even if you're a popular star and you've done wicked things. Or a leader that has done wicked things. God will forgive you. But you've got to repent and believe in Jesus Christ. Believe what the word of God says about him. And believe that his shed blood saves you. Forgives your sins as past, present, and future. Okay, believe that his precious blood, his precious, precious blood sacrifice is an atonement for your soul only. It's not by your works. It's all about what Jesus did. 
It is God's sovereign power in his plan of salvation, not yours. No one is going to heaven based on what they've done in terms of works. It's by faith. It's by believing. You must believe in Jesus Christ. And in Hebrew, Yeshua. He's the only way. You've got to trust in God. So, I'm going to continue. I have a few more slides to go. But this slide is extremely important. This information is extremely important. Please share this video with your loved ones. Even those that are their hearts are so hardened and they don't believe in the rapture. They don't believe in Christianity. They don't believe in Jesus Christ. But if you share with them somehow, even leave flyers at your home, you know, if they're left behind, they're going to be able to get this information, hopefully. They'll, they'll come across it. They'll know that they were warned if they don't see this video. And if you're watching this video after the rapture happened, there still is hope. You still can be saved. But again, do not worship the beast or the beast system or follow the system or follow the laws they're going to create. Jared Kushner, do not follow him. Do not follow... Barack Obama or the Pope Francis. Do not take a mark in your right hand or in your forehead. Don't take hyperdermic needles or the jabs. You don't understand the technology they have, nanotechnology and Bluetooth and all this. This You don't understand what it can do, what they can do or are capable of doing. So please trust in God, not in man. Don't trust in these churches, these churches that Satan is influenced, okay, the Roman Catholic Church claim that the Pope, the Vicar of Christ, that they represent God on earth, that is a blasphemy. Jesus Christ is the rock, not, you know, Peter was a wonderful apostle, but he was never the head of the church. It's Jesus Christ. He's the cornerstone. He's the rock. He's the foundation. You know, Apostle Peter, St. Peter, okay, he was obedient to God. You know, he directed all the attention to Jesus Christ. When you see a church pointing to their beliefs, okay, to their sacraments, then run from them. If their gospel is different, what's in the word of God, then run. Do not believe them. So I'm going to, I'm going to stop here. Okay. If there's people left behind after the rapture in a church, Okay, then obviously they were not born again. They did not believe in what Jesus Christ did. They didn't believe the gospel. They didn't believe the shed blood, the only atonement for their sins, the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Just like when Passover, when the time of the Israelites, when Moses instructed the Israelites to put blood on the mantle and the angel of death passed by, you know, they were obedient. They had faith. They trusted. Okay. And that was a foreshadow to what Jesus Christ would do. He would be the Lamb of God. He shed his blood for the forgiveness of sins for the world, for you and me. So you got to trust in God. Trust the word of God is infallible. It is true. Okay. So let me... Let me stop here. I'm going to I'm going to continue to the next slides. Okay, in this part of the video, I want to show you the high watch times that we're looking at right now. Now, this is a screenshot from the tour calendar, and you can see it's month 7, and right now I'm recording this video August the 16th, 2023. So, if you take a look, the first day of the month, okay, that's September the 17th, 
you got September the 18th and then the 19th and this is on the third day okay and it's also the fourth day in Revelation Jesus is known as the door okay and I'm just going to skip down here now September the 25th okay that is the ninth day in the Torah calendar in the seventh month and the 26th of September okay is the tenth day in the month and that is the day of atonement okay ten is known as usually known as a Gentile number and it could also mean fullness and 26 if you watch my videos before 26 is God's number okay and then we have 11 that usually indicates chaos disorder and you got right here you got 9 11 all right so very interesting now the next slide I'm going to show you how scriptures could relate to this time so let me continue Now, if you take a look at Genesis chapter 7, verses 4, For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth, forty days and forty nights, and every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. So you got month seven. Okay, fourth day. Okay, now could that possibly right maybe and then Genesis 7 11 okay the seventh month 11th day okay let me read Genesis 7 11 in the 600th year of Noah's life in the second month the 17th day of the month the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened so I just want to share those verses with you and I really believe I really believe that John chapter 2 verses 1 through 11 okay the story about that actually happened okay we record in the Bible the wedding at Cana of Galilee and okay and it's on the third day I'm gonna read I'm gonna read it actually for you and the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Okay, so again, I believe that the Lord is going to raise us on the third day. Okay, so you know, just like when Jesus was crucified, he died and he was buried, and on the third day he rose again. Okay, and just like in this, in the story the event that was recorded in the Bible the wedding of at Galilee we have a marriage okay and on the third day was when this miracle happened okay I'm just gonna skip down to the sixth verse and there were set there six water pots of stone okay now six represents man's number okay and Christians are usually known as stones Okay, after the man of purifying of the Jews containing two or three firkins, which is interesting. Two means unity or it could mean division. Okay, depending on the duality. And three, okay, that is the third person, the Holy Trinity, the Holy Spirit. All right, or it could be like 23, like the year we're in 2023 right now. And verse number seven. Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. In verses 8, And he saith unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. So it really sounds to me that this is a type of the rapture that the Lord is going to draw us out of the many waters, or the peoples. Just like with Noah's ark, Noah and his family ate people total okay and eight also means eternity were raised up on the ark they were protected and the other 
people unfortunately perished. So I think that this is again a very strong rapture typology. I think it's very interesting. And I'm going to read verses 9. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom. Now this verse could be relating to when Jesus Christ comes to meet us in the clouds, we will get new bodies, okay? And those that are left behind will have to suffer and go through the tribulation or Jacob's trouble. Now, verses number 10, And saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. Okay, so the born again believers are taken out, and then you know this event will possibly make the Jewish people jealous and realize that Jesus Christ, Yeshua, is truly God and their Savior, their Messiah. And you know, there will be, I believe, there'll be many, many people, there'll be a remnant of Jews will come to the Lord. Jesus Christ, and there will be also a lot of Gentiles that will also be saved, I believe. So I want to read verses 11. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. And again, this time for those that are left behind, the earth dwellers will be a 9 11, okay? And, you know, that's what we're. You know, this is relating to, I think, or connected to 9-11. Um, and I really believe that, Lord, he is, you know, through the Spirit, has really shown me that this is significant, these numbers. So I just wanted to share this with you. And let me go to the next slide. Now, before I continue to the next slide, I want to point out one other thing. Now, God's golden sequence or God's fingerprint okay starts with one one two three okay so could it be God's fingerprint you know this time period this high watch time again I think it is very possible that the Lord has started with his fingerprint let me just go over here to his fingerprint so you got one one right here it's really small and then two three and then 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, and it goes on from there. So I just wanted to include that. Okay, now I will continue to the next slide. Now I want to share with you Luke chapter 18, verses 8. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Now in prayer, I asked the Lord what he would like me to share with you, and I really feel that he wanted me to share with you the entire chapter of Hebrews chapter 11. So let me share that with you. Now you're going to find that Hebrews chapter 11 is an incredible chapter about faith. Okay, I'm reading Hebrews chapter 11, and this is from the King James Bible online. Now, let me begin. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Just amazing Bible verse in my Bible. I've actually circled this verse. It's just amazing scripture verse. Let me continue. For by it... The elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, 
and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Another verse that's absolutely incredible and so important, and I've circled this in my Bible also. I highly recommend that if you have a Bible to read the Hebrews in its entirety, and I would circle these verses. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 and verses 6. Okay, let me continue. By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By Abraham, when he was called to go out unto a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed, and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead so many as the stars of the sky in multitude and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable these all died in faith not having received the promises but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country, and truly if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country that is an heavenly Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning upon the top of his staff. By faith Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel, and gave commandment concerning his bones. By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. And really, most of us can relate to this, that, you know, sin can be very enjoyable, but you got to look in the heavenlies. you got to be spiritually minded, not currently minded. Okay, so it's another verse that I've circled in my Bible. But let me continue. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. 
by faith they passed through the red sea as by dry land which the egyptians assaying to do were drowned by faith the walls of jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days by faith the harlot rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace and what shall i more say for the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, son of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight and the armies of the aliens women received their dead raised to life again and others were tortured not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection and others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings yea moreover of bonds and of imprisonment they were stoned they were sawn asunder, they were tempted, were slain with a sword, they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tortured, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all have obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Now let me read Luke chapter 18 verses 8 again. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? That is a question. Now I want to show you something. Now, again, this is a screenshot from the Torah calendar, and these are the high watch days. Many people fill. Okay, this is month seven, the Torah calendar. Okay, it is September. Now, the Torah calendar says that the Feast of Trumpets is September the 19th. I have that circled here. Now, the number 19 means faith. Okay, and the Day of Atonement, okay, a week later, and this is all, these are both falling on the third day, that is September the 26th. Now, 26 is God's number. So, I think it's very interesting, you know, it is, it is possible that the rapture is upon us, it's very close in the tribulation, and Jacob's trouble is going to start very soon. I mean, that's, the signs are pointing that way. Now, is this thus say the Lord? No. We are called to watch. I can't say that it is going to happen for sure, but time will tell. But the rapture is recorded in the Bible. Okay. The catching away. All right. The rapture is going to happen. That's the next event on God's calendar. So. I just wanted to share that with you. We're in exciting times. Okay, let me continue. Now, I've shared this slide in my other videos, but I want to share this slide again. I'm going to read Isaiah 46.10. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Okay, now this is God's fingerprint. It's also known as the Fibonacci golden spiral, golden sequence. But the Lord, you know, he's adamant to tell you that it is his fingerprint. He allowed Fibonacci to discover it, but it is his fingerprint. And it's found all throughout nature. And it is also in the fingerprint right on your hand. If you look on your finger, God's fingerprint is right on the tip of your fingers. So there is no excuse to say that, you know, there is not a creator. There is a creator. There is a God. And he is true. His word is true. The Bible is true. Now, I just want to show you 
here is the golden sequence, golden spiral, God's fingerprint. You got one, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen, twenty-one, thirty-four, and it continues from there. And now this is the first verse in our Bible, Genesis one one. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Now, if you do not believe that first verse in the Bible, then you don't believe in you don't believe the God of the Bible, obviously. But God is true. He is not a liar. And I feel the Lord wants me to share his names, titles, tetragram, and number again. Yahweh. And Y H W H is his tetragram or tetragrammaton. Jehovah, I am. The Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, and his number is 26. He is the Almighty. And I want to read Revelation 22, 21. The grace of our Lord, Jesus Christ, be with you all. Amen. Okay, I wanted to show you the second part of my matrix one more time, possibly. Now, here we have YHWH, that's the tetragram or tetragrammaton of Yahweh. And we have Jesus, I am, and his number 26. Now, there's a little bit of a backstory of this verse here. Now, the reason why I feel the Lord wanted me to put this here is back in 2017, that's when I was born again. Okay, I come from a, a denomination that was a very workspace sacramental system. Um, I'll just say the name Roman Catholic Church. So anyway, some supernatural things that happened to cause me to um, really to question the validity of the uh, doctrine of the Catholic Church. Okay, well, anyway, I end up leaving in 2017 because I was born again. I started reading the Bible, the power of the Word of God. Okay, and in 2018, I had no intention to be baptized or rebaptized. Well, I mean, it wasn't a priority. I felt that, you know, Paul mentioned that he only baptized, I think, one person. And, you know, it's not by works. It's not by, you know, any work, you know, including baptism. But the Lord, I feel that I really went back and forth with the Lord. I really wrestled. I feel with the Lord, um, he wanted me to get baptized, uh, rebaptized. I was baptized as an infant. But, you know, baptism is important because it's a public declaration to the church stating that you are a follower of Jesus Christ. You believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. You believe in the shed blood of Jesus Christ for the atonement of your souls, of your soul and the forgiveness of your sins. Okay. Well, in the end, I said, okay, Lord, um, you know, he's very adamant. He wanted me to get baptized. So I don't normally do a lot of fall camping, but this year it just so happened we did. And, um, I, I went to, they have a, a field church, they call it. And we went to the service and I just got the thought in my head, you know, go ask the pastor, see if he'll baptize me sometime. I was thinking maybe, you know, who knows, six months, a year from now, but, uh, it was just like he was waiting for me, okay? And it was like all planned and all set up. And he said, oh, yeah, I can baptize you today. And uh, so anyway, after meeting with him after, and he asked me, you know, if I understood what the gospel was. And, you know, he was quite, you know, he's content with my, you know, what I said. And and I said, okay, well, you know, you're ready. So we went to a small lake and he called it Mission Lake. Okay. And I got baptized that very same day. And, you know, I, it was just an amazing experience, you know, unlike anything I've ever done. You just, you just felt the power uh, of the Holy Spirit. It just seemed, I mean, God's presence. But uh, anyway, 
when we came home um, from this campground, you know, I went back home and not uh, shortly after I got home, I felt the Lord put it in my spirit, like very clearly. He said, go, you know, search Google and put in 916. Okay, verses for 916. And one of the first or second verses, or maybe the third verse, was Exodus 916. And the Lord, you know, he gave me the impression, you know, this, you know, this was done on purpose. Okay. So, it, you know, that's, that's the backstory of this. And, you know, this is what the Lord wanted me to put here. So, so I did. And, um, you know, I just feel the Lord wants me to, you know, read this Jews, Jesus, Yeshua, and that's Yeshua in Hebrew, is God, your Messiah, accept your Messiah. You know, this is an SOS. Okay, now, I don't think it's a coincidence that, I, that the Lord had me draw this. It looks like a little bird, but it also could look like a W, and you got A, like the month of awe, like the Hebrew month of awe, and that's Feast of Trumpets, and also the Day of Atonement is in the month of awe, okay? I don't think that's a coincidence. You know, I'm not saying for sure that the rapture and the tribulation is going to happen right away. I don't know, but I really feel the Lord has put it on my heart to share this information. And there's many other watch men and women that are sharing, you know, a message that the rapture is soon and the tribulation, Jacob's trouble is going to start soon. So, you know, I'm be, being obedient to the Lord and this is what I'm doing. You know, there's a lot of people say that, oh, you're date setting. No, I'm not date setting. Date setting is when you say this particular date, the rapture is going to happen. Okay, I'm not doing that. And it's not going to discourage me. You know, you can say that a thousand times and I'm still going to be obedient to the Lord. I answer to God, not man. And, you know, I know there's a lot of people that are trying to do the right thing. And I understand that some, um, have believed that, you know, I mean, based on ignorance, they haven't read the, all the scriptures. And then some, you know, they've been told so many times that, you know, what, what we're doing here is wrong, but it's not. We're making people aware that one, the rapture is true. It is a correct doctrine. It is going to happen. And the rapture and the tribulation or Jacob's trouble is going to start soon. Like soon, you know, even, you know, if it was uh, years from now, but I, I really believe that it is sooner than most people expect. I also want to highlight right here, I feel the Lord wanted me to share this again 9 11 the lord had me write this down in this matrix and again this is a warning and the day of atonement you know recorded in the torah calendar is actually the seventh month and it falls on the tenth day so that's in between 9 and 11 okay again you know, we're called to watch. I'm just showing you what I feel the Lord has led me to show you. And uh, that's what I'm doing now. So let me continue. I just want to share a few more verses. Then I'm going to share a slideshow and that'll be it. So let me continue. Luke chapter 4 verses 17 through 20. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down, and the eyes of all them 
that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. In Isaiah chapter 61 verses 1 through 3, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Now I'd like to read John 3.16, one of the most popular Bible verses there is. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now I want to finish on this Bible verse, and then there's going to be a slideshow, so please watch right to the end. Now Revelation chapter 22 verses 20 he which testifieth these things saith surely i come quickly amen even so come lord jesus now please like and share this video if you feel led to and these comments have really helped me motivate me i really appreciate that and for those that are watching this video after the rapture happened, you, you missed the rapture, I just want to tell you there is hope. You still can be saved. You're going to want to trust in God and not in man. Okay. The Lord will send the two witnesses. Okay. You're going to want to turn to them. But again, trust in God, not in man. You want to open your Bible. Again, I highly recommend the King James Version of the Bible and read Revelation, Daniel the Gospels, Paul's epistles, read the whole Bible, trust the Bible, trust the Word of God. It is true, okay? God is true, okay? Let God be true and every man a liar, okay? Trust the Word of God. So thanks again so much. And I, if you could watch right to the end and watch the slideshow, thank you so much. I love you all. God bless you. You are not hidden There's never been a moment You were forgotten You are not hopeless Though you have been broken Your innocence stolen I hear you whisper underneath There is no distance It cannot be covered Over and over You're not defenseless I'll be your shelter I'll be your armor I hear you whisper Underneath your
Bye.